come here, baddie, baddie, baddie. <laughs> I, um, in, I in our group chat, I say, um, can you convey what Carl sees? Because I'm considering sneaking in as the door subtly closes. Uh, so let us, uh, Atifa, you probably do have a view of into this room, right? Through Carl's eyes. Um, now, not a complete view because uh, Carl hasn't come into the tower, but here's what you can see. Um, looking in, this is it looks like the tower is basically just one kind of big room. Uh, it's quite tall. Ceiling's probably a good 30 feet above you. There's kind of a strange uh, area, like a little, like, oh, like a garden, a, a, a little garden plot uh, kind of close inside the door there. Uh, there are some pillars. Uh, there are two platforms to either side of the, uh, the, 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 the immense chamber. One of them you can see a, uh, a badger with a, uh, a crossbow camped out on top, kind of a guard platform. The other one is unoccupied. You suspect the badger that's opened the door. That may have been his platform. But you can't really see it uh, yet without going into the tower what's happening on kind of the far left or right edges of this immense chamber uh, until Carl or one of you entered the tower. Uh, there is, you can see, in the on the kind of the far side of the chamber, within view of the front door, uh, there do seem to be a large set of stairs going down beneath the tower, and it looks like maybe some kind of well in the corner. Well, well, well. Well, 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 <laughs> indeed. So this is, I think, a lot hinges on what happens next. <laughs> okay. So do we want to try to lure this badger out, or do we just want to... Storm in and try to surprise. So uh, I motion like to send him in because I can't talk on the group chat. Mm. Yeah, because I once he goes Carl in, you'll know. Yes. Once once he goes in, you'll know what else is around and okay. can basically tell us what you think is the best course of action once we've mm -hmm. seen everything. Like if he's the only one in there, um, this level, then sure we can just go in and maybe okay. take him out. I'm just worried about how far Bob 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 can continue to throw his voice. <laughs> um, I, I don't think we keep making him talk at this point. Okay. All right. All right. So I, I'm going to step in like two squares and see what happens. So uh, Carl heads into the chamber. Uh, the badger, uh, I guess the badger probably uh, turns around ready to lead Carl um, off. Um, the other badger is up on the platform kind of watching um, the... Uh, Which platform? Sorry, let me reveal a little bit more of the map, especially now that Carl is in here. Do, do, do. You see that little platform up there? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There's another matching one over there. Mm. Um, and I'm just going to... There's uh, a door on the right side of the room. And... Um, hmm. It looks like there's some kind of raised platform on the left side of the room um and can't quite quite tell what's going on there but it's like it's like a lofted area and there's just kind of like a pile of junk uh, in this kind of lofted platform but through carl's eyes atifa it looks like there might be some kind of large creature uh kind of sleeping in that pile of junk in the bottom left corner of the map okay I'm um, relaying all of this to people. All right. So uh, the first badger starts heading this way. Uh, what does Carl do? You know, it occurs to me we probably should have tried to put some sort of poison on the fabric. We don't. Do we have poison? I don't have uh, any poison. I have a, a lamp fuel, but I don't know what. It <laughs> is. Super inconspicuous of Carl's just <laughs> reeking of lamp fuel. <laughs> Or gasoline. I, I also have gasoline. I spilled my lantern all over me. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know that Carl has much use now. Just keep sending him in. He's not closing the door. Maybe the other badger will have to close the door and we'll jump him. Okay. Uh, as in, fa in fact, uh, so as Carl moves away from that, um, so you moved him, you moved Carl into the little garden there? Is that what you just did? Uh oh! No, I think yeah, he did. Talk to him. Um, <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing. I thought particular. he was going to follow the badger. <laughs> nothing. You know, you're following in the general direction of the badger, but you didn't follow exactly in the badger's footsteps. As Carl, yeah. now you probably experience what Carl's experiencing, right? 
a little bit. No, I don't think so. Okay, I think well, only if I lost the... Um, so Carl steps onto this uh, this little garden area right inside the door here, and nothing nothing awful happens to Carl, but the grass in this little garden, it kind of grasps at his feet. Doesn't 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 delay him or hold him down, but it's certainly weird. Um, the uh, second badger in here that's already up on his platform yells at Carl, "Hey, what what are you raised in a barn? Close the door!" <laughs> I thought it was going to tell him to keep off the grass. <laughs> Me too. The, the right, other so, badger says, hey, keep off the grass. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, first of all, I'm going to, again, relay the information about the grass to my comrades. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have Carl turn around and act like he's going to the door. Mm-hmm. I'll let you control Carl. So, uh, I don't really know what to do. I think, I think it's kind of time to come in and surprise mm. We can use Carl yeah, as con- a meat shield now. Are we confident that there's two badgers, four of us, plus Robo Dog, plus Carl? Are we confident that we can rush in? Whiting says on the group chat. <laughs> well, um, only fools rush in. Well, the the only other thing I can think to do is just have Carl ignore the badger and keep walking in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that and would be a good distraction kind of a at least. Okay. All right, so so Carl didn't actually move back toward the door. He's taking another step on the grass. And he's taking another step to the pillars. <laughs> Damn it, Carl. And the, the badger starts climbing down from his guard station. Good. Uh, we talked about this. <laughs> Carl, Carl's going to move toward that badger. Okay. The, the, um, the badger starts heading toward the door. Am I the only one that reads memos? <laughs> <laughs> This badger has climbed up onto his, his platform. Okay. And Carl's Carl's just going to make his way right. kind of toward this. Carl, Carl is, uh, as he's moving, uh, aware of the presence of a very large creature up in that roost. In fact, I think I'm going to make this creature uh, visible to, to Carl and therefore visible to Atifa. Um, <gasps> oh. Atifa, there is an immense creature. It's It's kind of like... Kind of like a lion, Kitty. but with bat wings, and with where it should have a giant mouthful of fangs, it's just all pincers. Um, what, do you want to roll a nature check, Atifa? Sure. Let me see. Nature. Conspiracy. <laughs> More that. Nature. Oh. Fourteen. Uh, you know, you think you've heard tale of the Yexel. And, you know, it's, it's kind of the boogeyman of the waste. It's this horrifying uh, creature. You know, it can shoot lasers from its eyes. It can fly. It can tear people apart. And it's got disgusting, horrible mandibles that it will like to chew people. It also enjoys eating fabric. I was going to say. <laughs> mandibles Fighting for fabric. is instantly crushing. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, that, Carl is immediately aware of that. The uh the this badger is making its way to the door, intent on closing the door and probably barricading it. So I think you only have a moment to decide what you're gonna do. Uh, are these doors opened outward so that I'm behind them, or inward so that I can jump around the corner and take this badger by surprise? Uh, what do you think? What makes sense of a door is barred so it can't easily be opened? Um, um, I would say it probably opens inward. Uh... I, I'm not. I'm honestly not sure. I'm not a. I'm yeah, not a, a, I'm a, I'm a, not a door architect. Um, yeah, me neither. So here, check this out. Uh, odd. It rolls in. Uh, where's my dice thingy? Odd rolls in. It's odd. It it opens in. Okay. See. Randomness. All right. In that case, as soon as he gets close, I am going to move to here so that I'm blocking the doorway. Mm-hmm. And punch him. All right. Him I think you should all Attack. roll initiative. Yeah. Um, do, are we saying, does Carl get initiative or Carl, does Carl just move on Atifa's turn? Atifa, what did we say? Uh, we said he would roll on my turn. Okay. Let me roll some initiatives. Uh, uh, Whiting got a 10 exactly the same as last time. So okay. You I'll should be, be able back. to update your stuff. That's what I'm saying. I don't have to. Okay. 
Ooh, I like to see the, uh, the DM roll a one. Yep. That makes me happy. Take joy in my suffering. <laughs> oh, nice. When you hover over the uh, characters in the turn order, it uh, highlights the character token. Oh, I, is, I did not know why the character tokens were variously highlighting it. Probably as people were doing that. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> everybody can see that. I think so. Or maybe I was, maybe, oh, maybe you know what? You. When I, I did not realize that that was me doing that. Okay. <laughs> uh, did everybody enter stuff or is people still entering stuff? Uh, I've entered mine. I got mine. I'm set. All right. Uh, E84, I think you get a surprise round because I don't think a badger going Yay. to close the door was expecting to be punched in the face by a, an android. I, I hope not. <laughs> it's not often one expects that. So you basically get like a single action. I don't know if you're going to do a special attack or what kind of attack, but feel free to punch a badger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to use my disrupting touch, which is a standard action. Um, and let's see how that goes. Ugh, that is only 11 versus fortitude. Uh, what's a badger's fortitude? Uh, it is a little bit better than that. So that badger uh, is startled, uh, but you're you're you're, and you do make contact with him. But he seems he just kind of shakes it off and screams at the top of his lungs, "Intruders!" Oh well, oh, it was worth a shot. Mm-hmm. Quiet down, you pesky badger! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, and that's all I can do because that's yes. is my surprise. Can I assume that as anybody e, else as E84 kind of sidled in, they kind of opened both doors or are we dealing with one open door at this point? You know, I think probably they're both open because I think Carl mm-hmm. opened one half and E84, I think you just probably opened the other half to get where you are now, oh, okay. right? So mm-hmm. I think I think that's what happened. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, since we sort of had this coordinated, does at least Atifa also get a surprise or? Did you have a plan for what you're going to do, Atifa? I don't know. Well, if I can see the badger from where I am, which it seems like I can, um, I would do... Some kind of psychic. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, yep. we'll say that because the two of you are like flanking the doors, ready mm-hmm. to assault the person. Who I was kind of... I, I can't talk to her, but I can go... Like, no, you guys were... Two, this was... You have gone from people that just wander up a hill talking about selling horse horse poop to like a commando <laughs> team assaulting this tower. Yep. So much has changed in but a few hours. <laughs> Remember the, okay. by the how, your horses are outside, I assume. They are. Okay. We found their way at found, the bottom of the hill. All right. Yeah. You're not going to bring the horses on the adventure. Um Ooh, that's a great idea. Hey, let's bring the horses on the adventure. All right, let me get a bunch of horse tokens out, and we can really get into the, <laughs> Actually, the, sending, the joy of horse four, management. <laughs> sending four horses in would be kind of a nice distraction for the... Uh... <laughs> that's a distraction you can only do once, <laughs> Erica. Once, once well, you're four stranded. How many you have. Yeah, once, you know what? It seems really clever at the time, but then you're, when you're walking back home after <laughs> your four horses got murdered... <laughs> <laughs> you might feel a little bad. Depends on your character. That's a sad day. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I rolled a sixteen versus Will. Okay. The Badgers continue to have not the greatest Will. So he is okay. Manipulated with fear, I assume. All right. And so that is twelve damage. All right. That Badger is already bloodied. Yes. Okay. Bob, 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 I think you are next. You get a full turn, so you can move, you can attack, you can do a minor action, as many free actions as you need. <clears throat> oh, oh right. wait, wait, hang on. There's there's more with that. Oh, um, because he's free. Until the end of next turn, target gives combat advantage and has negative two on attacks. Got it. Oh, uh, if only we had known that. You could have. You could have gone first, and then I could have. Yeah. Well, you're still you're still polishing your commando act. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. No one sold any horse poop this turn, so it's it's a, a progression. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, I I'm going to have to do mental push because seismic stomp would hurt my dear friend E84. So. And you may need deep... to maneuver because I don't think you can because you're kind of on the wall of the tower there. 
So you're, ah, that's true. You're probably going to need to get kind of further back or just in front of the doors to see what's going on or into the into the tower. This is a Micah, you have not played in my D&D campaigns. It is usually that I build these elaborate landscapes forged out of pure blood and and spirit and imagination and people fight in the doorways for an hour and a half. So <laughs> you have crossed the threshold showing yourself to be braver than all of Dragonforge and Associates. So, oh, oh, by golly, on. I'm ready to storm this castle. Let's see how it works out for him. <laughs> I, I will have fun storming the castle. Uh, let's see. D- uh, roll d20 plus four, correct? Mm-hmm. <laughs> rolling my die and gonna make them die and 22 and you are uh, that is... me- mentally pushing this badger or something else you got two, I am two going... badgers and a a yexel <gasps> Ooh. push the other badger off his uh, <laughs> off his perch if i could push well it's it's a mental push so it attacks any creature that i want it's not actually so a physical push physically push them it forces no. them to attack their friend yes so oh, I wonder, so this would be versus Will, and I'm wondering if that 22 was high enough to get the bat lion, technically to snoop, to snoop lion. To I will attack. tell you, a 22 would hit pretty much uh, anything. You mm-hmm. Theoretically, you had to pick your target before you rolled it. So, <gasps> Oh, I'm very sorry. So don't, well, probably don't overthink it, but yeah, a 22 is going to hit anything on the map right now. All right, I'm going what? to hit snoop lion over there in the corner. <laughs> Erica, did you have a question or a concern? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just check. Maybe this has a crazy high will. Um, probably. Not. Oh, now he does. Now I check. <laughs> this is a, it's a give and a take. Uh, no, 22 hits anything on this. So, um, so you just, uh, um, what? so the mental push, he'll take some damage? Yes. All right. And Come. what else does he do? Target makes a basic attack against a creature of your choice. Uh, who would so, you like the Yexel to attack? I would like the Yexel to attack the badger that's on top of the pillar. You could have him attack E84 to curry favor with the badgers. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. Badgers. All right. Uh, you're going to love this. We don't need no stinking badgers. The, Yexel, uh, the Yexel's eyes glow briefly, and then laser beams shoot out of each eye in the direction. Eye beams! Eye beams pew, pew. zap <laughs> in the direction of a badger who is totally facing the other way, looking at all of you guys breaking into his tower. <laughs> Poor badgers. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> the badger is caught in the back of the head by uh, <laughs> laser beams. Oh, this is not good. Um... <laughs> Whom. I think it's pretty great. Yeah, the badger excellent. is incinerated. Oh <laughs> my god! Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Well, uh-huh. we don't want the Drexel to hit us then. <laughs> that was that in really some ways thirty-three damage. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, sorry, that rolled. That was. It should not have. I did not do that right. Um, it's like two d twenty plus four. That's been. a lot. Hold on, I'm rerolling That's that. A lot of damage. <laughs> okay, no, no, you know what? We're we're doing it as is. It should not have been that much, but I'm not undoing it. The the he will not do that much damage to to all of you. I put in a d20 when I meant to put in a d10. Erica, you'll okay. Erica or whoever's editing this, hide this so I seem super confident and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the badger is incinerated by the Gexel's eye beams, and you're all super terrified by it. Um, clearly, I painted a horrifying vision of expertly rolling the right dice in this horrible <laughs> nightmare chamber. Uh, yeah, so you've moved. You've manipulated a Yexel into incinerating a friend. Um, anything else? Were they really um, friends? I mean, Carl really didn't seem to care much for the Badgers. Co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do awkward trust fall exercises last week they hated it i do not want to do a co- uh, trust fall with a lion bat um is that is i don't that, think a lion bat wants to do a trust I, fall. is that is that racist <laughs> so <laughs> um i uh, no, i think that that i i pull out my toy dump truck and go <laughs> <"Wee!"> <laughs> <laughs> uh are you all set bob 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 uh, Bob 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 is satisfied. All right, E eighty four. You've already led the charge. What will be next? There is a nice, appetizing looking garden you can stroll through. Hmm. I'm an android. That's not appetizing. 
Um, I don't eat food. I'm I am quote unquote machine powered. So Androids don't need to yeah. practice mindfulness. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to use my machine grip, or at least attempt to do so, on the badger that's right next to me. Mm-hmm. See how that and goes. don't forget you have combat advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah. In which case, that is a 13 versus reflex. And uh, oh, the badger has negative two on attacks. Never mind. That will not quite hit the Ugh. reflex of a badger, because re- the badger's reflex is 14. And you already did the, the plus two for combat advantage, or do I need to do yeah. a minus? Two? Okay, so a thirteen. Thirteen would be what I. He needed. Yeah, a, so. You were just a little bit short. All right. Well, I. Is I that poke was him. that with advantage? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yep. All I, right. I poke him. Does this hurt? Does this hurt? Uh, you clamp Apparently onto his bandolier, no. and he's like, "No, that does not hurt." Um, but get out of my tower. But I'm still blocking the door. Yeah. All right. Is the badger ready to go? You all set E84? Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stay here in the doorway to make sure it stays open so that my compatriots can get in, too. All right. The badger is next. Uh, the badger is right next to E84, so the badger is going to pull out. Uh, what do, What is this particular badger armed with? He has a, a, a mace, and it does look like it's, <laughs> you know, it's an old-timey mace, uh, you know. He, maybe he got it from some kind of abandoned Ren fair. Um, <laughs> so it's he, plastic? <laughs> maybe. We'll find out. Um, that old but, time a mace. <laughs> let's see. He will attack uh, E84. Uh, 15 plus 6 is 21 versus AC. Is that with your minus 2 to attack? 19 versus AC. <laughs> I, I am, I'm, still, I'm still amazed. All right. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> you will take six plus three is nine damage as he wangs you on the side of the head with a mace. It's hard okay. to know if you're made of metal or if the mace was made of metal, but there's definitely a clang noise. Clang. Um, right. I think that's all the badger can do. Well, I think the badger's going to shift back into the corner so he gets hopefully hit less from all the people uh, curse in the you, doorway badger. at least. Um, Whiting. You're a feline vampire hanging out outside a tower full of badgers and giant lion bats. Hi. Everything is great. Uh, so before I do my turn, and at, at the risk of spoiling the dramatic tension of how amazing my uh, alpha mutation is, I, I want to ask you, DM, mm-hmm. is this really what it does? Like, I can just <laughs> stand out in the middle of the thing and... Oh, do you think I read it? <laughs> <laughs> hold on i'm going to read it now great either way i'm going to move uh whiting one two three four yeah that should get me over to next to the badger and i'm a slash there's a uh, 17 versus reflex for our badger friend i think that is what it is i think you know you can only I think you can only do it once, though. But it, it says personal, uh, immediate, um, immediate interrupt. interrupt. Yep. So when that so thing it just happens, w- uh, you can decide. Do I when... decide when it happens? Yes. Okay. So, for example, you might not want that to happen right away, unless something really, you know, unless you would prefer what's about to happen, you know, to happen differently. I'm acting very cryptically. This code, yes. No, I, I Brian, appreciate how cryptic. You... Wink, wink. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I appreciate how cryptic you are, and I really appreciate that the clarification, okay. the very vague clarification. Uh, either way, so vague clarifications um, rolled... are my specialty as a dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled what did I say seventeen for our badger friend slash. Uh, so you're slashing Reflex. him. That will definitely you... slice that badger. Okay. Uh, Uh, Oh, and and natural 20 on my second uh, attack for this. Uh, I think when you do... How do crits work in... Whatchamacallit? I assume probably you do max damage. Aline, did you have a question? I was just going to remind of combat advantage. Oh, yes. I don't need to. Um, Excellent. Let's assume... Because I don't want to spend... I've spent a lot of time flipping through the book, and I feel bad. Uh, roll damage for the first attack, and then whatever your maximum damage would be for the second attack, since you got a crit. Excellent. So that's 12 for max damage, plus... 
Uh, four plus, so that's twenty-two damage to this badger in the corner. Okay, you slice that badger in half, and then you slice those halves into halves. <laughs> badger it's jerky. Sweet badger jerky. It seems <laughs> unnecessary, um, but I guess that's how you're rolling as as a vampire. So, all right, that's one less badger that you have to worry about. I take um, out my pocket shot glass, uh, <laughs> scoop up a little bit of blood, and do a shot. Oh. Not unsettling at all. Um, <laughs> uh, I also get to control uh, Robo Pup, which I'm going to do very quickly because that was a long turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll bring Robo Pup here. And uh, how far is the? Range 10. Oh, yeah, that, that'll hit one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that, that'll hit. Uh, Snoop Lion in the corner. All right. I will tell you that due to that pillar and Snoop Lion's roost that he's hang- crouched in up there, uh, Snoop Lion's going to have uh, actually pretty good cover until he launches himself from that roost. So, All right. But, uh, uh, spoilers. Again, you know, <laughs> I'll retcon slightly you miss and move 100% back a little bit. of the shots you don't take against bat lines. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'll retcon a little bit and have uh, Robopup move back. Okay. A little bit, so it looks like he has slightly clear. Yeah, he has a clear line of sight. You in this will case. have a minus two instead of a minus five. Roll the take. Oh the yeah, shot. thank you. That's so sweet of you. <laughs> That's how I describe DM Tony as sweet. Twenty five minus two is twenty three versus what? reflex. What guys? This is my lion bat. He wants to kill some of you. Uh, that will hit. He killed a badger. Isn't that enough? No, none of you are a badger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is uh, five damage. Okay, I don't feel bad about that. Um, hold on, he's got so many things he can do. Uh, I mean, uh, I everything's like great. That. Yeah, everything is great, Erica. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry. Great, five, my turn's over. Five damage. You know whose turn is next? Ah. I don't. I don't have any idea. It's the Yexel's turn. What will the Yexel do? He has so many things he could do. Um... I would like to point out that there is a uh, a pig standing there holding a bunch of very nicely draped fabric. Mm-hmm. Perfectly Expertly draped, draped, one might say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Yexel launches itself from the roost, flaps across ah! the chamber, is kind of hovering in midair, this um, huge lion creature with bat wings mandible sticking out from its snout its eyes still kind of glowing from where they've shot lasers reaches over and will attempt to eat carl (laughs) okay uh come on carl this is gonna be a d20 plus seven that is 20 versus ac um i believe guessing that (laughs) carl basically has one hit point in his current reanimated roadhog status Mm -hmm. yeah the yexel tarot's carl's head off and then just slurps the cape off of his fallen corpse. Um, it turns out Yexels are pretty awesome and can sometimes do more than one attack a turn. Oh, boy. Oh, that's just what I wanted to hear. I don't call that awesome. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> this plays against Bob Bob Bob's sense of fairness. Uh, Bob Bob Bob. The Yexel is going to shoot lasers in your direction. Uh-oh. Uh, Bob. Eight versus reflex. Oh, uh, let's see what that is. Eleven. All right. You skillfully dance out of the way of the laser beams. And boy, is it a dance. So I'm just going to mention uh, this Yexel. I mean, I feel like I've painted a picture here, but just in case you're not getting it, Pretty bad news. Um, probably you have a variety of alpha mutations and omega tech that you could use. Um, you can't use them if you're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Atifa, it is your turn. You're still safely well, outside the door. Atifa, you could just, man. in fact, you're the only one not in the tower. You could just, close, could just the do- close the door and walk away. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, can, we can start a new adventure yeah. for you. Go back to Professor Rat and be like, what else you got? <laughs> <laughs> get a job in a bar somewhere tell yeah. me stories professor the... rat has like i have some library books that need returning that's not professor rat's voice it's been too long <laughs> so <laughs> um i remember the last time i met a yexel let me tell you 
I'm uh, I, I I actually don't like fighting. My Omega Tech is close range or uh, you know like triggered on a thing, but I'm gonna step just barely into the doorway, and I'm going to. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I can vitality transfer. I need to be much closer to that. All right. So I'm going to do my fear manifested. And that is a 21 versus Will. All right. It You know, it turns out when a giant lion bat is kept as a pet, it does not do so great for its will. So you will hit its will. And uh, that's nine damage. Okay. And that is my my turn. Okay. Uh, Bob, 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 you're next. <clears throat> now, I wonder, can my mental push be used against a creature? Like, can it, can it control it to hurt itself? It just says, target makes a basic attack against a creature of your choice. What if I choose the creature that I, I don't think target? it can attack itself. It's how All I'm right, going to roll on that. You have another attack we haven't seen yet, right? Seismic stomp, but I've got to get nice and cozy. I guess I could move in and... You could. Just don't walk on the grass. Let's see. I've got five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four. Okay. All oh, wow. right. Seismic Stomp! Uh, D20 plus 5. That's uh, versus Fortitude. Okay, it's Fortitude is 17, so you just hit it with your uh, Seismic Stomp. Okay, it says 1D6 plus my Strength Modifier. That's it should four. say right above that. that It should do the math for you, even. Oh, yes, there we go. 1d6 plus 5. 1d6 plus 5. 11! And does it do anything else seismic related? Yes. uh, Knocks the target prone. You knock the Yexel out of the air and it lands on its back. (laughs) It looks slightly less nice it looks slightly in, in fact it's kind of embarrassing because it looked like like this horrible nightmare monster and now it looks like a horrible nightmare monster that fell over <laughs> Thump. it's much more comforting yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anything else now it's more of just a mildly bad dream yeah it's still quite large what what else is because i've moved now so yeah, i can't you've move moved again the right? so unless you have some kind of minor action um, which you may or not may not have any exciting minor actions. Oh, I just whip out the doy dump truck again and start playing with it again. <laughs> <Rum>. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, next turn would be Carl. No Carl. Pour some barbecue sauce out on the curb for Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> morbid much. That is so racist <laughs> and so delicious. Um, E84. It's speaking All of right. racist and delicious. It's an Android's turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like it. I don't know how androids um, work. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, they're racist. They're just not delicious. I assume, especially like an old timey Doctor Who robot, is probably there's probably some issues. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I uh, my alpha mutation right now is something called fast healing. So whenever I start my turn and have at least one hit point, I regain five hit points. So I'm going to. Get and back that just I literally didn't even look yep. at the alpha mutations I sent you people, which is really mm-hmm. exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I am back up to within four of my maximum. Now, uh, one question about alpha mutations, if they have an overcharge thing, do I still have the option to overcharge it on my next turn, assuming I live that long? Or is it yes. like the first time it kicks in, you're stuck with it? It looks not? like for your, a lot of alpha mutations are like, this is a thing you do. Yours is more of an mm-hmm. ongoing condition from how I'm gotcha. reading it. So basically, whenever you start your turn, you could choose to overcharge it. Okay, um, got it. It looks like... Uh, it looks like if you fail in the overcharge, some exciting things happen. So just be aware of yeah, that. So, so mm-hmm. I mean, as yep. is true for most overcharges. Um, yep. yep. So okay. you, and that's not like an action or anything. That just happens, right? Nope. It just okay. happens. So you're yeah. just, you're healing, which is good because you took some damage, right? 
Um, I did. I have healed now more than half that damage, so um, that's that's good. And I am going to use my movement to not walk on the grass, mm -hmm. but to get right up, and I'm going to stand over the... Um, the, the now flailing thing. Now, because it's on the ground, do I have combat advantage? Because it's prone? I am not 100% sure if that's how it works in Gamma World, but that's what we're going to say for now. So, yes. Okay. Sounds good. And then I am going to use my Omega Tech and that one. My other Omega Tech. Scrolling back. Okay. My Prototype Power Fist, oh, which is an ex an experimental fusion-powered gauntlet. Sports titanium alloy servos allowing me to deliver massive blows. So, um, I did confirm I, prone does mean in Gamma World it's the same as D&D. So, yep. Awesome. Uh -huh. Okay. So, I don't have a uh, a macro that includes the um, combat advantage. So, that becomes a 17 versus AC. All right. You punch the Yexel right in the gut with your <laughs> supercharged power fist. Um, nice. And wow, and this would have done damage even if you'd missed it. So powerful. Um, yes. So you deal, and still would have knocked it prone because it, yeah. if it hadn't already been prone, I would have knocked it down. So it takes is that fourteen damage? Is that what it takes? Fourteen damage. That All right. It takes. The uh, the Yexel coughs up a half digested cape, um, <laughs> <laughs> but is not bloodied yet. Um, oh boy. All right. Uh, I don't have any. Miners. Yeah, I think most of you don't, unfortunately. Um, yep. So I guess I just stand here and wait for death. <laughs> In a way, aren't right we all? With you. <laughs> so it would be the badger's turn, but there are no more badgers. Whiting, you killed a badger. Uh, I, I did. My my claws are still covered in badger blood, uh, which is delicious, by the way. Um, it's not, so it's probably not safe. Tell me a. <laughs> they're Tell me five about foot tall me. talking badgers you don't know where have they been so. <laughs> oh thanks tony um i just I, tell me do you see more... a shower in here so <laughs> <laughs> do you know what day old badger uh, a what? i'm sorry like? <laughs> there's I don't no know what a shower is oh so, well sorry sorry didn't want to get into your character's backstory um <laughs> <laughs> so yes i guess vampire cats don't take showers that makes sense so <laughs> No, I haven't been invited to a, a shower in a long time. None of my friends have gotten married in uh, years. So, Shh. are <laughs> tell me more about the condition of uh, the evil. Uh, what, what's it called? Yexel. Yexel well, thing. you've you've um, wailed on it a decent amount, but it's not bloodied yet, so it's still still you know still but it's pretty prone menacing. And it, yeah, it's it, prone. It's on it the needs ground. To take an action to stand up. Yes. Okay. Well. That's about to change because my bear friend <laughs> is going to fly through the air, tackle it, and restrain it, hopefully. Is that, is that how your bear friend works? <laughs> yes. So, uh, ranged five standard action attack uh, on the fortitude uh, success for me. The target is dazed and restrained by the toy. Okay. <laughs> There's there's no limit on how big a creature it can uh, it can restrain. Does not appear uh, to be. Doesn't say. Nope. Nice. Uh, that is a non natural twenty versus fortitude. All right. Uh, you we expertly <laughs> sail the uh, animatronic toy stuffed bear across the room, and it lands perfectly on the Yexel's face, <laughs> blocking his vision, restraining him, dazing him, and I bet it tells him a story. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Once you go time. into the woods today. <laughs> wow. Excellent. That so, is, this uh, is not, well, not the turn of events I expected today. <laughs> <laughs> you should always so, expect stuff bears. Uh, Does that do save damage? save ends both. I don't know what the save is on the Yexel's turn. The Yexel um, would have to probably beat it just a standard save to get out. Um, all right, excellent. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I'm also going to control Robopup, who will... Uh, uh, just to get a slightly clearer line of sight, we'll move back here and still do its, uh, let me double check the roll, but it's still going to do its little pew pew lasers. I will tell you that because the Yexel is on the ground, the Yexel is actually slightly harder to hit. Um, and I threw it on the ground. <laughs> uh, where could I put Robopup where it would be easier for, uh, for it to hit? Uh, right next to the Yexel. 
Mm-hmm. Or don't worry about it too much. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. It, it's right next to the Exel. It, uh, it has six movement, which is a free action for me to do. And as a minor action, I get to make it uh, hit. Okay. Robopop uh, rolls wait. right up to the Nightmare Lion Bat and fires at point blank range. And somehow still misses with a 10 versus reflex. It happens. The Yexel's really flailing around with that bear stuck to its face. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, that is uh, Whiting's turn. All right. It's the Yexel oh, of the boy. hour's turn. The only Yexel there is. Um, <laughs> well, the Yexel is prone, dazed, and restrained by a stuffed bear. Um, this is not great for the Yexel. Um, I remember this scene in Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alas, poor Yexel. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Hardly. <laughs> uh, so angry. Um, I am going to roll. Uh, uh, I'm going to decide that the Yexel is not really thinking systematically and is probably just going to lash out randomly. I'm going to... Uh, Roll a d4 and decide which of you gets attacked, uh, counting left to right. Uh, one is oh! Baba Bob. Um, the Yexel is going to try and bite at you from the ground, but given his situation, he is somewhat disadvantaged, and rolling a three is not going to help. That would be a <laughs> seven versus AC. I suspect that won't hit. Um, Fourteen. Yeah, the Yexel is just thrashing about kind of helplessly. Um, well, let's see. The Yexel should probably try and save against the uh, bear stuck to its face. As you do. The bear. Mm-hmm. The Yexel manages to toss the bear free. <laughs> All right. Well, that the bear. He is free of the bear, but it basically cost him an entire turn. So, Atifa, you are next. All right. Well, um, don't fix what ain't broken, I guess. So we're going to do Fear Manifested again. Okay. Is that a ranged attack? Yeah, it's uh, 10. Okay. Because then it'll be minus 2. Because he's prone. Yeah, he's, he's basically a smaller target from a distance. Uh, a really yeah. appetizing target up close. Well, so my other thing is a melee, and I could get close enough to do this. Everybody's but doing it. It's... <laughs> <laughs> It's my level plus six, so seven versus fortitude. And I feel like this thing would have more for- fortitude than It's seven. fortitude is 17. Yeah, so... You mean it's not a thing right that you roll? You no. No. Oh, you it's really? an attack. Level plus six, or is that in addition to a d20? I think it's always in addition to a d20. Oh, okay. Weird. I, maybe it's that- just formatted strangely i know the the character sheets i sent you guys were a little weird sorry about that okay well this is my omega omega power uh Mm -hmm. thingy um all right so i'm gonna come over and uh rest in peace carl but i'm gonna attack a thing from just kick carl's headless body aside yep (laughs) yep Hmm. hmm He didn't do a lot for us in life, so I'm not going to Do you know how much tactical advantage Carl (laughs) gave to you? In life? Oh, in life, sorry. In life. Sorry, I forgot about the many stages of Carl's existence. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So that would be 18 versus fortitude. That, well, Erica knows what happens since his fortitude Mm -hmm. is 17, because Erica is an automaton that counts their defenses. (laughs) All right, so my hit is 3d6 plus my dex plus twice my level. What attack is this? This sounds crazy. This is the Omega uh, Unstable uh, Vibroblade that oh you... Oh my, so you basically walk up... To, so a Vibroblade is a, um, you know, this is somewhat malfunctioning, but a Vibroblade is basically a lightsaber. Uh, so you basically walk up to him and try and cut him in half with a lightsaber. I'm Ooh. I'm working on it. Um, so twice my level would be two. My dex modifier is dex, 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 16, but that's not my modifier, right? Is the modifier plus two? Uh, It's either two or three at that point. Um, just say it's three. We won't. Okay. We'll figure it out. So that's five plus whatever I roll here, uh, which is nine. So that's 14. Okay, you just slice into the Yexel's wing with that pretty vicious attack with the lightsaber. Uh, you didn't want to overcharge it, did you? 
I don't think I want to overcharge it. No. And okay. uh, listeners, not- you could imagine what might happen to an overcharged lightsaber. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, <sighs> even not doing that, it's going to take ongoing five physical damage until it saves against it. Okay. So he just, the Yexel just took 14, you said? Yep. You bloody the Yexel and the Yexel, one of its wings is really kind of just hanging on by a thread as the Yexel takes some ongoing um Where's the most lightsabery looking symbol in here? Um, damage. So, not a great day for Yexeltown. Um, anything else, Atifa? Nope. You have made a bold move closing with this horrible nightmare creature, but you ran up to it and pulled out a lightsaber that perhaps no one knew you had. It was super scary. All right. Bob, Bob, Bob. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I'm going to do. Oh, should I use my whip? Let's see. Okay, so with with the um, Omega thingies, we roll 1d20 first to see you, if we can hit. Uh, yes, you always are going to roll a d20 to see if you can hit okay. it. Um, I forget what your whip does. Um, it says one hand me- melee, power is encounter of laser, standard action, target one creature, attack yeah. level. Okay. Um, so it's, and then it's going to be. What's uh, the difference between attack and hit there, though? What's what... so attack is what you add to the d twenty. So you would oh. roll a d twenty and add your level, which is one plus six. Okay. So you're going to add seven to a d twenty, and versus okay, its gotcha. reflex. It looks like so you then... rolled high. Um, Right. So, yeah, and then the hit is how much damage you do yep. if you make contact with it. So what do you get for your hit? It's like uh, I would have got I got sixteen, so plus seven is twenty three. All right. Yeah. So you totally lash at the Yexel with your laser whip. Um, now you can decide. Oh, this one. This actually it looks like your laser whip does not have an overcharge, so we don't have to worry about it. Wow, the laser <laughs> whip does a lot of damage. It says three d ten. Uh, let's see, 3d10 plus my dexterity modifier. What did we decide on modifiers? I don't know. Was this it keeps two? coming up. What's your dex- what is your dexterity? My score? dexterity itself is uh, 9. It might be like minus 1 at that point. I think. Or do, what do you think, Erica? I was going to say, is it? I know it's 0 at 10. Uh, I, just, I just found the chart. Uh-huh. Oh, good. <laughs> Feel free to so remind me nine. in the future. It's on page 59 of my silly manual. At 9, it is minus 1. All right. All right, so 3d10, 10. 10 minus 1 is 9, plus twice my level, so Two. 12, right? Yeah, uh, so 12 total damage. Uh, you, I, I knock the target prone if it wasn't already prone, and I get to pull it two squares. I think you might be off by one, because uh, it's 3d10 plus your dex modifier, which is a negative value. Oh, right, right. right, right. So it's yes. 11, but, but yes. yes. Okay, cool. All right, so you slash at him with the laser whip. The Yexel looks extremely worse for wear at this point. The Yexel is already prone, uh, but it's further discombobulated. And what does it say? You can you can move him if you want. I can um, pull the creature two squares, but I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, so pulling it. So the laser whip had the advantage that you could have actually grabbed somebody from quite a distance away and pulled them to you. You're already up close and personal with this uh, lion bat, so there's nowhere closer to pull him, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been pretty great if you had like laser whipped a badger off one of those platforms. <laughs> that... <laughs> Down yeah. here you come. All right. Uh, I suspect your turn's all set. Uh, other than I just want to take out my toy dump truck and run it across the creature's belly. Good night, <laughs> Yells the Yexel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Carl continues to be dead. Um, <laughs> the, the second death. Uh, E84. You're up close and right. pers- personal with a Yexel. All right. Well, I am now back to full health because I get another mm-hmm. five hit points at the beginning of this turn, which puts me back at my full. Um, and I am going to... I kind of like it where it is on the ground. I don't know if he can fly with one wing. I don't really want to find out. So I'm going to try my machine grip. Okay. You. This could go disastrous if it flies away and you're still attached to him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I'm pretty heavy. I'm made of mostly metal. Uh, I, I rolled a one. Ha ha! Uh-oh. When you roll a one... Uh-huh. Uh, so first off, E84, you miss. 
Um, yeah, okay. Okay. Second Slam off, it to your own arm. <laughs> you're, oh, you, dear. You, you've had this uh, ongoing healing that's been happening. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, mm-hmm. you feel something inside you um, fluctuate a little bit. Oh, this is mm-hmm. great. I think this is random, but this is great. Um, oh, dear. Erica, I'm going to send you... So your uh, your healing power that you had goes uh-huh. away. Oh, I'm going to send you this. Take a moment to read this, and then I'd like you to describe to your friends what just happened. Okay. Oh. At least I got healed up at the beginning of my turn. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so, okay. um, yes. So E84 uh, tries to reach out mm-hmm. and clamp the Yexel um, and misses as the Yexel is writhing about on the ground. Mm-hmm. And... It seems like E84 is going through some kind of aftermarket transformation. <laughs> yeah. Um, as you can see, suddenly uh, suddenly E84 has giant clown feet. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> yep. My toes are actually now sort of poking poking into the, the head of the uh, the bat, uh, which is probably ignore, uh, annoying E84. But yeah, I have I have suddenly come down with a nasty case of footus ginormicus. Oh As you wow! Do. Yeah, on the bright side, if we are if there's any swimming involved in this adventure, I gain a swim speed equal to my land speed. <laughs> and and I ignore difficult terrain from soft ground such as snow or mud. So, you know, this could could be helpful. Like but I'm not hobbit. healing anymore, and I look ridiculous, and I'm really not okay with it. <laughs> yep. I'm glad that happened. Um, <laughs> oh, the sixth scent of defeat. Ah. Uh, the XLE2 first. Uh, E84, <laughs> are you all set? I I feel like I would like to stay adjacent to You're the creatures. You're probably still getting it. getting used to your new feet, so probably don't want to yeah. like run, might, run away on them just yet. I might trip if yeah. I try to step away. So plus there's that grass. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna stay put. All right, Team Badger, still dead. Whiting, still a cat. So Whiting's speed is such that they can vault around this little garden and not have to touch it in a uh, little tongue-in-cheek reference to not being on the grass earlier because Whiting's the kind of person that would do that. You take a shortcut, Uh, yes. They then... (laughs) uh, They then... Do some uh, claw slashing. All right. I should have the CXL's defenses memorized at this point because I've looked it up like 40 times. But here we go again. All right. Okay, that is a... 11 versus reflex and a non-natural 20 versus reflex. Well, the 11 will miss. The other one does not. Excellent. D6 plus 6. Whoop. Uh, 11 damage from my claws. All right. Nice. Now, the Yexel will choose to do this, which it probably should have done before, um, cause, but it can only do it once a round. I guess it could have done it to E84. Because you missed at it, uh, the Yexel is going to attempt to push you back by just flapping its wings ferociously. Um, let's see if that happens. That is going to be a 24 versus Fortitude. Wow. Yep. Mm, nope. Uh, wait, so, let me check my Fortitude. Yeah, yeah, there's it, no yeah, way it's yes. So, um, well, he rolled minimum damage, so that's good. You're going to take five um, physical damage. And. All right. You get push one square. And you fall. Ah! Uh-oh. That can't be good. As I fall, I yell, Robopup, avenge me! And uh, <laughs> Robopup will attempt to avenge you. <laughs> uh, 16 versus, I think it's reflex. Let me check. Uh, yes, 16 versus reflex. That will hit the Yexel. Yex, it will. Um, okay. Oh, I've been ro- rolling the wrong die this whole time. It's a D8, not a D6. Okay. Uh, that is not, that is 10 laser damage. The, the uh, robot dog shoots the Yexel 
in the head, catching it in the eye. The Yexel had exactly ten hit points left. <laughs> oh, it wow. howls Whoa. and slumps to the ground. However, what, uh, Whiting, Uh-oh. you find yourself... <laughs> um, do an athletics check. That is an 11. You find yourself unable to stand up from the grass that you've fallen in. The grass is clinging to you, holding you in place. Are we Listen, still in rounds? Uh, I would say you're, you're no longer in rounds. Okay, then I'm Listen, immediately going to... I know gonna... I'm desirable, but come on, <laughs> let me go. I'm going to take out my bowie knife and immediately start sawing at the grass around him. Okay. To help um, him up. So, uh, why don't you make another uh, uh, another attempt to get up, waiting? But you get plus two because uh, E eighty four is chopping away the grass that's holding you. With an athletics check. Yep. That's eighteen. All right. The two of you working together are able to free him from the grass uh, that appears to hold anyone who's been knocked prone in place in this little garden. That's kind of mm-hmm. creepy. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Bleach. A little bleach. bit. Sure is. All right. So uh, you have survived. Um, and we'll wrap up shortly. Um, so I would suggest if you have any Omega Tech that you used, um, roll the D20 for each item that you potentially used. If it if you got below a nine or below, it has expired and no more. If you get twenty uh-huh. or above, or sorry, ten or above, it will continue to work. Um, Yay! I rolled a ten. Sh- I got a twenty. <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Right, yeah, Robo I love this. Pop, I love I this. In you. Punching gauntlet. Five so. Robo Pup's last action as oh, a good what a friend way to go out. of ours. Pew pew, pew. And then like falls back with like smoke <laughs> rising from its snout. <sighs> okay. And let's see if Te- Teddy Rux pin you down. Uh, no, I get to keep Teddy Rux pin. Okay. Uh, you, if you uh, are still alive, which you all are, uh, you regain any hit points that you lost. So make a note of that. And I don't know. I mean, I we're going to wrap up shortly. Should we just stop now? Or do you want to do a little bit more? Like, I, we're not going to do any more combat tonight. Do you want to do anything else tonight? Or should we just stop now? I feel like stopping now would be okay. preferable for me. Because otherwise, we're just going to have to recap whatever it is we learn in a okay. minute anyway. Yeah. So um, I would suggest, because I sent stuff over Slack, um, like, mm-hmm. make note of what... Don't worry about what your current alpha thing is, because you're going to get a new one at the start of the next thing. But make note of which Omega things you currently have. Um, I am just starring those messages. In. Yeah, because that will be important. Can you, can you pull up starred messages once we get past the 10,000? You may want to write down on your sheet in some form what item mm. you have. And I can, cause I can always I can always resend you an image. Um, gotcha. How do people feel about Gamma World? You guys seem to pick it up really quick. So I love this. Thing. I like it. This is this great. Is excellent. So this so was um, this is like the adventure, like the base adventure from the box that they used. They suggest people play. <laughs> it is eight encounters, and you you just did two of them, um, and also the start took some time, right? So you know, yeah. I would say you're about a third of the way through it. Um, maybe maybe a little less than that, um, but yeah, that's what it's like. It is. A little on the, like, from an adventure design point of view, it's very dungeon crawly in terms of, like, there's a series of rooms with bad things that want to kill you in it, um, but the wackiness is kind of in the creatures and yeah. the characters and stuff, so. And the teddy bears yes. and the robo dogs. Right. Yes. And it is. And the clown and the, feet. And, and the dead like, walking pigs. It's very random, right? Um, so, uh, you, the downside is you could have a character that could, like, I mean, literally, when I ran this for some friends a couple years ago. I had a char- a friend had a character, and I think his character was, like, he didn't realize from, like, he didn't really look at his stats. He played it the way he was used to playing his D&D character, and, like, his character literally, like, ran up and fell in that crater and died on the first turn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. And then, and, we, and then he sat there. He spent the time designing because they hadn't made backup characters but he watched us play for like an hour and he had and he designed a really great character that immediately basically appeared that we wrote into the story as soon as uh the, the fight ended but i felt bad that he was you know he was watching people play D D for an hour um and mm-hmm. and building a character but that can happen i love right this. So these mutations that get added at the that like that's that adds even more yeah. Yeah. excitement. And you Whereas can see with... they're very wild, right? Like because like Erica, literally right now you have one that's kind of useless versus you could have one that's like devastatingly powerful. Um, mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, I mean, that healing one was amazing. Yeah, yeah that so. was neat. And Brian, you had one that you didn't even need that was to use that was super powerful. Um, it was excellent. I would, instead of taking whatever damage I got, I just get that hit those hit points back. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah. My yeah. question was whether or not that was persistent because I was already at full hit points anyway. So, like, do I just not get hurt at all? But I think turns so. out it's, yeah. uh, it turns out it's – It turns out it's, uh, like, me – choosing okay this is the attack i'm going to absorb that power but i never got hit at all so like it's not it's yeah. i love having these kinds of random things that could or could not go into play at any time yeah yeah uh, yeah right. and as much as it as much as it sounded terrible the the stink glands were actually pretty fun <laughs> they were helpful yeah yeah oh yeah the yexel has collapsed to the ground uh you've checked whether your Omega technologies are going to continue or not. Um, everybody should take this moment to uh, heal up to full health, because that's what happens in Don't. Gamma World. Okay. Ooh. Whenever you rest, uh, which I'm assuming in this encounter, in, in this adventure in general, you'll want to take a couple minutes between encounters. There might be a tactical decision where, like, an encounter ends and you don't want to stop and take a brief rest. Like, you know, you're in hot pursuit of somebody or there's some threat, you know, heading toward you and, and you don't want to stop. But in general, we'll assume that after a fight, you stop, catch your breath, heal up. You check if your technology is not working, uh, you, your fancy technology continues to work or not. Your alpha mutation may kind of fade down a little bit, but you know you know that as soon as you uh, go into that next fight and your adrenaline stops pump, starts pumping, uh, there will be yet a new alpha mutation you will experience, because that's just life in the weird, <laughs> wild, radioactive world of Gamma World. So, we find ourselves uh, sitting around the uh, corpse of a Yexel, a giant <laughs> bat lion that shoots lasers out of its eyes. Uh, yeah. As you do. Do you guys want to check in on how your, what your status is with each other? I'm crying. I'm very sad for this Yexel. Oh, I hold I'm the, uh, white, Whiting holds the corpse of Robopup and uh, oh, cries oh. to the heavens, Why? <laughs> So there's a lot of crying. A lot of crying. Uh, I would just like to congratulate everyone on their theatrics. I think everyone played their part. I could tell that everybody had, you know, an internal uh, guidance going, and they knew what they were after. You all did such a wonderful job, and I think only because we worked together so very well is why we defeated this horrible creature. Sorry, You think this is an act, old man? Whiting yells through sobs. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry about your (laughs) robo-dog. Um... I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. Uh, I I think... So we're, we're all healed. The encounter's done. We're good to go. So I think I would like to explore because there mm-hmm. are still some areas that we can't see or we haven't seen yet. And uh, investigate the areas that we can see. Sort of yeah. more There's a whole Yexel nest to be dug through. <laughs> yes, yes Yexel true. there is. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a good one, DM. <laughs> <laughs> Stop kissing up <laughs> all right so this uh this kind of strange this is kind of the uh the 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 tower is basically just one big room that you're occupying that you can see there's a, a, a side door off to the side and then there's stairs leading down which is kind of strange so it seems like there's more to this ba- uh, badger uh, kind of warren than just a tower because there's there's something underneath the tower perhaps it's just a basement perhaps it's just one more room uh but this seems to be the entryway, and there is no sign of robots here. And this tower is where you believe robots to be coming from. And that is, that's why you're here, right? It's to explore the source of these strange robots that once a day are rolling toward your town, threatening it with, uh, with rockets. Um, so there's these kind of little guard platforms, uh, as described before, um, that the badgers were uh, hanging out on. There is the Yexel Nest in the... Uh, mm-hmm kind of the bottom left corner of the uh, the map. And you, you'd have to kind of climb up a little rickety ladder to get up there because it's kind of a raised platform. It looks like there's kind of a dry well in the bottom right corner. And on the uh, east side of the map, there is a doorway that leads somewhere. Um, I think that's that's what you see currently. 
Whiting does one of those triple jumps from Mario 64 with a, oh crap, an eight athletics check to try to get up into the, uh, into the Yexel nest. Okay. (laughs) Are the, um, are, are the little ladders that go up to the guard towers, are they affixed to the guard towers or could they be moved to the Yexel nest? Um, they look like they could probably be moved if needed. They're just kind of propped against the I'm going to move a ladder over and just climb up. Okay. So the Yexel nest is filthy. It's all kinds of scraps of fabric and some twigs and leaves and kind of rotting material and more than a few carcasses of small animals that the Yexel seems to have feasted on, but also it seems to eat a lot of fabric. Um, but, you know, maybe <laughs> it turns out when you when you eat the coat off something, sometimes you take some of the creature with it. Um, mm. And it does seem like there's a few items in here um, that are perhaps left over from unfortunate Yexel vix- victims. Um, so, Whiting, the first thing that you find is a fully loaded handgun. Why don't you make note of that oh. on your character sheet? Ooh la la. And, you know, I, I believe some of you guns, have guns yeah. and some of you don't. I think most of you have kind of defaulted to your uh, your various Gamma World mutation powers, uh, which tend to be mm. pretty powerful, but sometimes it's nice to have a gun. I have yeah, a I toy have an dump assault- truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I do still have, I have an assault rifle and one clip of ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, at, uh, in Gamma World, is ammo sort of interchangeable? Like, would we be able to use that same clip of ammo for the handgun if we just, dis- like, if the assault rifle... I'm going to say no. And in fact, I don't okay. know if we talked about it last time, but there's basically, in Gamma World, they have this kind of weird, wacky rule for how ammunition works, uh, which is basically, you're either careful about using ammunition and conserving it, or going all out and using all your ammunition... <laughs> So that's worth noting uh, because it, it ammunition is relatively hard hard to come by in this uh, weird post apocalyptic world. Mm-hmm. So fair enough. Um, you also find a funky looking piece of future technology. I'm opening okay. up my mm. folder where I have screenshots of this stuff. Is it labeled funky pieces of? future no, technology but it, you know you recognize it it's got that distinctive look to it you hear oh. a funky bass going in the background right next to you find a uh, funky winker bean comic strip it's very weird <laughs> all right sorry i had to when i restarted all my folders um mm. had to got closed and now they're back open all right so uh E84 will say that you found this because Whiting found the uh, uh, the gun. The gun. Let me just pop this into Slack for you here. You find a, I believe these are a rather peculiar set of gloves. Ooh, let's see. These bright green gloves are perfect for those times when you need to pull an ally out of a vat of wild nano or an acid spill. Interesting. All right. Wow. So, okay. So I can put my hands into, uh, into liquid or gases. That's, that's kind of cool. Including molten iron. I, wow. I enjoy how uh, specific some of the technology in Gamma World is where it's like, that is for a very specific use. <laughs> So <laughs> other things are like it's a it's a it's a rock you can throw at anybody where it's like this is gloves for acid. So mm-hmm. all right. All right. So, Does anybody else feel like they would rather ca- be carrying this than than no. me? I have I have no particular attachment to to this. I actually already have a different glove at this point. But they're nowhere near fashionable enough for me. So uh, uh, they are bright green. They are very, very bright green. So mm-hmm. I, what are uh, so E84 and Whiting are up in the Yexel nest. Uh, mm-hmm. yep. uh, Bob, Bob, what are you up to? I would like to young man. Uh, there are three Bobs, but uh, I'll, I'll give you a pass this time around. Um, I, I thought I had it right. Um, uh, no, nope. I would like to check the other badger tower thingy with mm-hmm. the one that still has the, the ladder on it. Okay, and Atifa, what are you going to be doing? Well, first, I need to know, those of you who listened to the last episode, did I lose any of my Omega Tech? Don't remember. I don't remember, yeah. I don't think I did. 
I think you probably would have crossed it out or something if you had. Yeah, I would exactly. have. Yeah. I remember the dog dying, but that yeah, was I remember sad. that being that's sad. The only, yeah, the dog dies at the that end. Was sad. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, puppy. Um, so I think I'm going to go over to the. Uh, I don't know if it's the east side of the room. Sure. Um, over here and and look around and see what's there. Okay. Are you opening that door or just looking around that side of the, the chamber you're in? Is that a door? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I may not have. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can tell that's a door now. Um, well, it's not a jar. Okay. <laughs> and it makes a better door than a window. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a wind door. I'm not going to give you any <laughs> All right, so so instead of opening a door now that I know that it's a door, I'm just going to say, "Hey y'all, there's a door over here. We should probably check this out." And I'm instead going to go over to the well and very carefully peer in and see if I can see anything. Okay. Well, well, as you're all kind of scrounging around, um, why don't you all roll on the old junk table? Um, ancient junk table. So if you have a two d two d tens, you do one for the tens place and one for the one place. Or you can just if you're in, in roll twenty. You can just roll a d one hundred. Um, but give me a roll, and I will uh, I'll tell you what you find because everyone's gonna find some kind of weird trinket, including Whiting, who found a yep. uh, handgun. You also Is find a thing. I, I rolled a one hundred. <laughs> pretty. Not. Yeah, that one, Micah. That'll be your tens place. Yeah, uh, most. Uh, Hexahedral, whatever the term is, sets include uh, two d10s, one with uh, extra zero place, and one that's just zero through nine. Yeah, and all of that is going to be uh, what you roll for a percentage check. Yep. All right. Uh, waiting. What'd you get? Uh, forty-three. All right, forty-three. You found an umbrella. Uh, Ooh. Atifa, what'd you roll? Eight. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't a saving roll. Eight. You, you found a uh, a clip of ammunition. Ooh. Okay. Hey. So if you have a, a a device that uses ammunition, you can decide which that it fits that or not. Um, Bob, Bob, Bob. What'd you roll? Uh, Thirty-five. Thirty-five. You found a slide projector. <laughs> Slides not included. Um, oh. <laughs> and E84. 100. 100. Yeah. You found, uh, I'm going to modify this slightly. You found Uh-oh. a gas powered blender known as a daiquiri whacker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God. That's amazing. Margarita's uh, on E84. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks so well, find- not included. Actually, you guys, you guys, it's not here because I left it with the truck, but I do have five gallons of fuel. We are totally, if we make it through this, we are totally having a, uh, a whacked daiquiri party. It is good, <laughs> it's good to pre-plan the party before you fought the killer robots because um, you don't want to, <laughs> yep. you don't want to have to think about those details after the killer robots. You're going to be all tired out. You got to have a yep, plan. Then exactly. you just execute the plan. This is well, just, you also mm-hmm. want more to look forward to. Yeah. I hope that Whiting people, is- I hope that listeners appreciate how much post-apocalyptic survival lessons we're conveying here today. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whiting is imagining all the amazing scenarios the daiquiri whacker could be used for in interrogations well they they it, i mean it's dangerous but you'd really need to fit whatever was going to be whacked inside a blender so there's some limited mm-hmm. you know like it's mainly dangerous to fruits and vegetables is what you ever said goonies tony <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's true. I, I guess I'm not remembering a, a famous blunder scene. I am now remembering. <laughs> there is. I am now remembering. <laughs> it's kind of morbid. Uh, I'm now remembering a famous food processor scene from Luther, and that's not good. So um, <laughs> go to sleep, cleanse kids. Um, yeah. All right. So everyone got a uh, a piece of junk, and everyone's gonna get. Um, let me just check. Do you get anything else, or is that it? Do, do, do. Somewhere. You hear creatures in the t- tunnels, maybe making some kind of chirping noises. Uh, da, da, da. What you're also going to find some, in addition to the ancient junk, which probably took a while to find, uh, you find some good technology that I will be dropping into Slack for you. Uh, let's Ooh. see here. Drop so, like um, Erica, you happen to get two items of which you've seen one so i'm gonna so everybody else is gonna get an additional item so cool oh wow all right yeah you basically i I think at least in this adventure you get an item 
basically every fight with the idea that, you know, they break down a lot. Mm-hmm. All right, Whiting, I sent you an item. Uh, Tifa, I'm sending you an item. And if any of these, I had to like take photos of cards, so if they didn't come out great, let me know. Um, E84, you get an item. And Baba Bob, you get an item. Oh my gosh, it matches. It's a bright green mask. It's going to match my bright green gloves. These are all random, yes. so that is, you know, that is just I think bright green luck. is just the theme here mm-hmm. in Gamma can World. We, can we go around the room and say what everyone got? Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I got something called a tangler. And basically what happens is it, it goes around my waist. I snap an electrified wire out of this belt unit and I can entangle my foe with it. <laughs> it's a 3d6 plus... Oh, wait. Let's see. What's the attack? Uh, level plus six. I don't know. I don't even know <laughs> how much damage it does. But anyway, I can entangle a foe with it. Nice. Well, I got... As I said, uh, so previously I found those uh, Ishtar Enviro gloves, which were in the uh, in the the nest. So now I have some an Ishtar Enviro mask, which uh, lets me breathe in dangerous environments. Uh, it says if you want to use a silly voice while wearing it, that's up to you. I think my voice is already pretty silly. <laughs> uh, Whiting does a team rocket pose with the umbrella and the Mark I laser pistol and talks Ooh. about how awesome it is. Uh, it is a one-hand ranged weapon uh, that gets uh, certain damage as you uh, fire it. So you've got a handgun and a laser pistol today. That's, yep. Can I, uh, DM, can I dual wield? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. And I got the Ishtar Electro Flail, which is a one-hand melee weapon, uh, and it does damage. Uh, power is encounter radioactive sign, electricity, Ooh. physical. I don't know what that means. Uh, it sounds badass, though. Yeah. I got to start using my Omega Tech. I've yeah. Well, you can't cards. take it with you. Well, I think you have successfully uh, looted this badger uh, guarded foyer and taken care of a Yexel nest. And who knows what further dangers await for you in Gamma World. They'll probably be worse than anything you've seen so far today. And perhaps we'll find out what that looks like. What perils await you in the harsh realm of Gamma World next time on Total Party Kill.